I am a lifelong reader. There's no doubt about that. I've been reading since I was about four, most of it with my mom, and then I transitioned off into the wild unknown, reading on my own. And I read from four years old into, you know, when I was 15, I entered ninth grade, and the whole time I was reading, I didn't really learn anything. And I, I consumed all this raw material. One summer I read through a dictionary, and then the next summer I read through the world book that my grandfather gave me. And despite learning all of that raw material, I really, suffice it to say, didn't learn that much because I wasn't processing the information. I was just getting it. And it's like a wet sponge trying to soak up water. You can't do it after a while. But sophomore year, I took some seminar classes where I would read outside of class and then I would come into class and I would discuss the information with my classmates and my teacher. And this trend continued into my junior and senior year and it's not when teachers talked at me or to me, but when teachers started to talk with me that I really started to learn. And I can't tell y'all how many times I've sat at home staring at a math problem with no idea what to do or what it's even asking really. So I go to my book, that's pretty much in another language. I go to my notes and I can't figure out what I wrote down. I even look it up on the internet, but let me tell you, that has not worked out well in the past for me. So I go to class the next day, and I spend the whole period looking at the same problem, learning absolutely nothing, and only getting more frustrated with myself. The past two years, I've been in classes that have been completely flipped. We watch instructional videos outside of the classroom, and when we're in class, we come together to do the work. We collaborate, we bounce ideas off of each other, we talk about it, look things up, ask questions. We've even used a whole whiteboard to do one math problem. And I leave feeling confident in my abilities, like I've really learned something. Working with others is when I really started to learn. As I've gone through high school, I've realized that I can't learn something just by hearing it once or seeing it once. Somebody has to tell me about it, then I have to go read about it, then I have to sit down and write about it, then I have to Google search all the interesting pathways that lead from it. In my favorite classes, I work hard because I want to be prepared for the next day's assignment, but at the same time, I find myself getting drawn into the information that I myself find particularly intriguing. Through this, I've been able to research really obscure, but at the same time very cool topics like the changing of medical freedom in the United States, the um, narcissism epidemic that's taking over Western society, and conspiracy theories about the Zimmerman telegram. My teachers have helped me shape and twist the lens through which I see my world on an individual level, and that's how I learn. Obviously, John, Jordan, and I have lots of differences in our learning styles, but once we sat down to talk about what we like and dislike in class, we realized that there are actually quite a few commonalities. And before we sat down, <clears throat> before we sat down to talk about what we like and dislike in the classroom, we thought about it independently, just writing down a list, likes and dislikes, pros and cons, and then we came together in a conference room at our school, and collaborating through a Google Doc and drawing on a whiteboard, we put into we put together this model that shows our likes and dislikes. Unsurprisingly, the way in which we crafted our model mirrored the model itself exactly. And that's why we called it the I do, you do, we do model. In the I do, you do, we do model, which you can see above you on the screen, um, we have an outer triangle and an inner triangle in the base of the first triangle. The outer triangle signifies out of class work and the smaller triangle inside is in class work. In the top of the largest triangle, we have the I do section, or the teacher's role in the learning process. Before the semester or the year begins, the teacher sits down and creates a class syllabus, basically a plan of what the class will be learning and the pace at which they will be learning it. This whole model starts with the teacher's perspective because they are the ones who are telling the students what they'll be learning in their particular course. Now the larger triangle widens to the you do element of the model. This refers to the student's independent work outside of the classroom. This is where students really get to dive into their learning and take it by the reins. The students do instructional videos like I mentioned earlier, maybe readings, discussion questions, or research, whatever the teacher truly feels is necessary to prepare them for the class. This outside of class work requires students to be proactive. They can learn at their own pace and they can learn in their own style. Up until now, teacher and student have been working somewhat independently, but in the base of the triangle, teacher and student come together in class and the model repeats itself. Once again, the top of this triangle is the I do method, the teacher's role, only this time, like John said, we're in class, not out of class. 
The teacher answers any basic questions that the students have from the previous night's assignment, and then they assign a task for the class to complete. While the teacher directs and supervises this task, most of the burden of work is on the students themselves. Exactly. So as the triangle widens to the you-do element once again, the students work collaboratively within the classroom. They split into smaller groups of maybe two or three, and here they can discuss all their ideas from the previous night's work. They can ask each other questions, complete the assignment together, bounce off ideas from each other, and truly come to their own conclusions on the material, instead of being taught what to think. After the students work together in groups, teacher and student come together at the end of class to synthesize and process all of the information presented throughout the, class, throughout the course of the class. Through this discussion, the teacher should aim to make sure students haven't missed anything in the learning process and make sure that they totally understand the information. But this begs two questions. First, why, and then how? Why is this model effective? We believe that the I do, you do, we do model works because it encourages freedom of thought. In classes that John, Jordan, and I have been in that have utilized parts of this model, we've been encouraged to think, discuss, engage with, and question the concepts with which we've been presented. This ultimately helps us become individual self-motivated learners and collaborative learners, which prepares us well for a world that we'll be entering that's beyond simple textbooks and terms. Then how? First, teachers and students must work together to de deconstruct the traditional classroom model. No more lectures. The teacher must do the I do part and the students the you do part. And this is how you deconstruct both the classroom model as well as preconceived notions students may have about course material. The next essential step in carrying out this model is discussion. Now, as most of you probably know, it's going to be pretty hard to get a class to discuss something if they're used to being talked at instead of talked with. You have to go through that awkward silence for a little while. And why is that? Because students are afraid of being wrong. Let's face it, everybody's pretty afraid of being wrong. You don't want to be that person that blurts out the wrong thing and gets weird looks from everybody around you. But the truth is, it's really important to be wrong in order to ever come across being right. In order to foster this comfortable classroom environment, the students work in smaller groups where they can talk amongst their peers and get their ideas out. And then they come together and reconvene, they hear the other group's ideas, they get advice from the teacher, and they truly master the material as a whole. Finally, this model works because of organicity, which is a term that we coined that means a combination of elastic and organic. Think about it. How did you get here today? You probably could have taken one of many routes, but you would have ended up in the same place, this room. We think that the same is true of learning. Teachers should feel free to pursue constructive tangents that their students are embarking upon, as long as the tangents lead back to the main goal of understanding the course material. On the flip side of that, if students are moving through a concept quickly, they're really getting it and understanding it, then the teacher doesn't feel like they have to spend the allotted amount of time on that when there's something more challenging along the road. Our I do, you do, we do model allows students to work independently outside of the classroom to pursue learning in the way that best suits them. It allows them to explore their own pathways as Madison does. And it also allows them to come together and collaborate, which works best for me and John, to bounce ideas off of each other, to learn from others, and to develop their own viewpoints. Through independent work and collaboration, true learning can take place. We believe in freedom of thought. We believe in deconstruction. We believe in collaboration and discussion. We believe in organicity. We believe in the I do, you do, we do model. Because that's how we really learn. Thank you. Thank you.